Okay. Hello, my name is Susan Castro. I represent Ward 4, beautiful Ward 4 on the south side of Brockton, on the Brockton City Council. And this year I'm also serving as the president of the City Council, which is my honor. And I'm, I, I thank you all for watching this, and I thank everyone here in the room for attending this meeting on a frosty Friday evening. We're going to be discussing a proposed project to um, redevelop some land in Ward 4 on East Market Street and Montello Street and Copeland Street. And we want to redevelop it, or the, the proponents want to redevelop it into four buildings that would house about 79 units of, of uh, dwellings, and also some commercial space and also some parking spaces. So without, your, without delay, I'm going to introduce attorney John Creighton, who represents the developers. Thank you. Thank you, Kath. Thank you very much, Sue. Attorney Jake Creighton, um, I'm probably the only person in this building that knew Ed Gilmore after who this building is named, Dr. Gilmore. Oh, that's how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, I'm in this cold night, I hope it doesn't last too long because my favorite program is on later tonight. That's called Friday Night Smackdown. What is it? <laughs> no booze? No, oh, please. In any event, I just want to hit, you know, we've been many months on this situation with professionals, non-professionals, addressing what we feel would be all of the major issues that uh, all of you would be concerned with. I'm just going to hit quickly some of the areas that we've hit, which might generate some of the questions that the neighbors may have. Green space, parking, traffic studies, storm management. We have, uh, we have the engineer here that can answer that question. We have two engineers that can answer that. And Mark is the uh, architectural engineer, which is the person that plans all of the buildings and the layout. Snow removal, uh, odor control. We know we're in a business district. The area is going to be between Main Street, East Market Street, to Montello Street. We have traffic flow plans. Uh, we have uh, signage situations. We have sidewalks that may be of concern to people. Uh, we've kind of, for sure, made this a very unique and unusual uh, development site for housing, of market rate housing, that really would discourage some of the things that many of the other people might think, you know, truck traffic and all this other thing. You'll hear from our engineers on that situation also. Lighting so that it's not offensive to any either business, which is mostly the area, or residential neighborhood people. Um, we've, uh, we've, we've checked the security. Naturally, nowadays, when we're proposing perhaps 79 or 80 units of housing, uh, one single family, single room, double room, that type situation, what the concerns are there. Uh, those are basically the hit-ons. It is a C2 zone, so we are in the proper area uh, that could, you know, with certain approvals by city boards, and we have to go through a number of city boards uh, to get approval of this final project. So it's not something that's going to be happening probably in the next two months. It's going to take several months and a lot of questions to be answered by boards, by residents, and by commercial uses in the area. And so without further ado, uh, I would, we do have the owners of the property here also this evening. Should there be any direct questions about, uh, for example, what are we going to do with commercial because it's going to be a joint type use or a mixed use with commercial, there'll be some commercial stores at the bottom and there the rest of it will be residential. What type of shops will be in there? Obviously, we may not have the definitive answers on that, but we can give you some idea what our thoughts are. Without further ado, Scott Farrier, the owner and principal of uh, J.K. Homeward, the local Brockton uh, connection here, and Mark Dooley is sitting here. He's the architectural engineer that can answer other questions for us. Thank you, Jake. Okay. Uh, as Jake said, Scott Farrier, Homeward Engineering, uh, engineering and surveying work on the site. 
I'm just going to give a, a, a real quick overview just to, to hit on a couple of points uh, that Jake mentioned. Uh, I'm sure it was just about everybody knows the, the property is on Market Street, East Market Street, cutting between Main Street and Montello, Perkins up above. Uh, the Murray family owns uh, all of the properties on East Market Street in this area. Uh, East Market Street is a private road, uh, and as such, where the Murrays own the property on either side, they're pretty much the owners of East Market Street. So uh, having that, uh, the ability to, to own the East Market Street, we've had uh, a, a couple of extra benefits for our development. When we've sat down and met with the planning department, uh, a big thing we really wanted to, to focus on was trying to limit the use of East Market Street as a cut through uh, for cars that were looking to avoid the lights either on Perkins or down below uh, at the next intersection. So the road isn't that long. We really can't put a curb in the road, but we've done a couple of things. We've put a little bit of a bend in the street. The street is going to have sidewalks on both sides. It will be a one-way traffic flow from Maine to Montello. Uh, we'll have sidewalks on both sides. We'll have trees lining the streets. We'll have some park benches lining the streets. Uh, some wallet lighting that will also line uh, line the streets, so it'll, uh, it'll it'll really kind of close the street in and force people to slow down that I drive on the street. Our goal is again to to try to limit the amount of traffic and really just keep the traffic to the residents. Uh, as Attorney Creighton said, we've got a few buildings uh, around the property, five buildings to that front out on Main Street. Uh, it'll they're separated by Market Street. Uh, a ter uh, architect Mark Doolin can show the plans uh, in greater detail, but the, the third and the fourth floor of these two buildings uh, will bridge Market Street. So it'll kind of look like a, a tunnel coming off of Main Street down East Market Street. Those two buildings will have some commercial property, uh, the storefront spacing on Main Street. We have uh, a series of parking lots. These buildings that front on Montello Street will have uh, essentially parking garages underneath the uh, the residential units will have a surface parking area right on this side a surface parking area here and our uh, really a, a, a big focus point that uh, Mark Doolin came up with meeting with the, the plan department we we really wanted to focus on a large green area in the middle of the property right now really this whole neighborhood it's all either building or parking there isn't much green space out there so we have a kind of a large park area or a plastic area proposed right there that will be a nice uh, a nice feature for the development uh, in addition to the, the surface parking we have a lot of trees proposed uh, the other big thing that we get to do in these redevelopment projects that we do all over the, the downtown area where there are older buildings older parking lots even older streets there is no drainage to handle stormwater runoff so when we do these developments where uh, required by both federal law and state law, in addition to the, the planning and conservation requirements in, in the city, we're required to handle the runoff from our project. So for this entire project, right now, there is no drainage to handle it. Heavy rainfalls, you have uh, a lot of gutter flow, a lot of flooding areas on Montello, on Main, and certainly on Market Street. And uh, we will be handling all of that with a, a series of catch basins, manhole, and subsurface infiltration areas. So it's all uh, all modern, state of the art, uh, cleaning structures that uh, basically put clean water back into the groundwater. So environmentally, with the addition of the green space and the trees and the introduction of the, uh, the drainage that we'll be putting in the site, it's uh, environmentally a much better project once it's all built uh, compared to what's out there now. Uh, all other utilities obviously are available, water, sewer, gas, electric, everything else is out there for us. Uh, as Attorney Creighton said, we've got kind of a long road to hold with the city. Uh, our first step will be going through to the Board of Appeals uh, for permission for a residential use in a commercial zone. So we'll file with the Board of Appeals. That's a public hearing. Uh, once hopefully we get uh, a positive vote from the Board of Appeals, then we go through the Planning Department. And uh, it's a, a couple step process. A lot of really all of the city departments involved. 
uh, it's probably a three or month or four month long process. So everybody has uh, plenty of opportunities from the city's point of view and from the uh, the abutters point of view to put forth any comments that they have that we'll end up addressing as we as we go further. But that's uh, that's our plan as it stands right now. And uh, I think maybe Mark Doolin can show you some of the building. Then if we have any questions afterwards, I'd be happy to answer. Thanks. You got it. Uh, you heard Scott talk about the, the uh, East Market Street here and how we're going to put a kink in it and maybe repave it uh, because it's in rough shape. Now, attorney, attorney Creedon wanted to leave it like it is with the potholes because they slow the traffic down. But the, no, engineer, no, no, no. <laughs> the engineer wants to make it nicer. Uh, and actually, uh, we've been working on this for how long? A couple of years, it seems. So I've kind of gotten to know the neighborhood a bit. I don't live locally here. Uh, and I'm uh, impressed with some of the things going on. Can I recount those to you for a second? For instance, um, over here on, 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 on Main, up here and down here, are some 1890-ish brick tall buildings. How many stories are they about? In one case up here, it's what, four or five stories? Four? Uh, four very tall stories. And down here, it's, it's only three stories, but it's a huge building. And these buildings are begging for some kind of rehab. And uh, very often, when someone like uh, Everett comes along uh, and, and, and undertakes a major development like this, and this is major in my book in this neighborhood, uh, uh, that will spawn other investment in the immediate neighborhood. And I'm counting on that to happen, and I think you'd agree yeah. as an engineer and an attorney. Uh, so in the meantime, let me show you some sketches, not sketches, drawings that we've done. I just caught hell because I didn't bring up stand. Can you help me with this, please? Just hold that up. So here we are, where where uh, across we're across Main Street, and we're looking back down on the fish and mongers place here. Uh, here's the tall building here. The, one of the tall buildings, which has a lunch, a breakfast room, a breakfast uh, place on the ground floor. Do you know that spot? Have you been in there? It's very good. It's very good. And uh, here's the other tall building uh, on the Scott's uh, left wrist. So uh, uh, back here in, the, in this corner, there's an existing building now. Uh, and that existing building is a large brick block. It looks like an old National Guard armory. Uh, excuse me, haven't been there, I know. Uh, and uh, it doesn't convert well to housing or anything else. So that building, and we, we, we tried to make it work, it didn't work. So we are taking that existing building down putting parking below it and putting uh, one, two, three levels, uh, pardon me, one, two, three, four levels on top of the parking that will be underground. You with me? And you will access uh, the, the parking from Montello Street here. Come down Montello, turn and go down into the parking below the building. We're, we're providing parking at the rate of one spot per unit. Does that sound reasonable? I want a response. <laughs> well, if you have a two bedroom, you should have two parking spaces. Excuse me. He one says bedroom. Two. Well, you should only have to have one. But the 12 year old of the second bedroom, he doesn't have a license. You're still going to have working people in there. We are going to have working people in here. Uh, that's true. And. Um, some people will have no cars because of the proximity of public transportation, right? How far is the train station? Right down 200 yards, maybe? Yeah. 
So uh, I, we're, we're counting on and will be seeking approval for one parking spot per dwelling unit. A lot of the, the downtown projects, the newer projects that have gone on in the last three to five years, uh, a lot of them, in fact, all of them, the ones that are rented now, just about 50% of the spaces are being used. The other 50% are not being used. Uh, typically in a project like this, the spaces are rented out. It's an additional fee that you pay along with your monthly rate. The other projects downtown, they're only being used by about 50%. So we're, we're finding that these projects, even though I couldn't live without my car and I've got four cars in my driveway, the people that are moving into these projects don't have uh, a lot of vehicles. It's just not needed. So it doesn't make sense for me. Might not work for you, but the people that are moving there, that's uh, that, that's how everything is going nowadays. <clears throat> that's how an engineer does it. He has four cars. What the hell? Uh, across from the National Guard over here is uh, currently uh, some open parking. You've, been, you've driven by it a million times. And there's another one story, a large one story uh, store. Have you been in that store? It's, he's selling uh, uh, used products, a thrift store, a thrift store. In fact, you can get, I bought this jacket there, $10, which I thought was a great deal, but the sleeves were too, too short. I had to link them, that was 50 bucks. Uh, so here we have, again, another four-story building. In this case, the parking will be at grade and will extend out behind the building. So here we have below grade, here we are at grade. In both cases, the first floor of these buildings will be not housing, but other commercial uses. And uh, who knows what they're going to be, I don't know. Uh, but we're thinking that they'd be rather small. I want Everett's grandson to have a studio there. He's an artist, you know, a, a 10 foot wide studio. Maybe there'll be some artists move in with some other kinds of studios. Or maybe there'll be a, a, a little competition for the breakfast store at the base of this great brick building over here. Uh, Attorney Creedon, I think, referred to these two buildings, these buildings facing uh, Main Street. There are two buildings, uh, and on the upper level, when you get to the third level, the buildings connect over the entry row here, which is uh, East Market, which I think is really cool. I want to see the, the image of that. We have some drawings. Uh, oh, we'll stop here for a second. Here's the building I was just talking about. The building on, are you paying attention? The building on East Market, going down East Market with the parking at grade, right? And it, it, it's, uh, it's at variance with a lot of the architecture you see around today, which is pretty boring, which encourages me to mention that I look around at all these flags where these are where your students are from, like, is that correct, yes. Counselor? Yes. And in, in my office, the people are from different countries. And the fellow that designed this is not me, it's a Federico Arishano from Uruguay, who met his American wife on the beach at Punta del Este. He never had it so good. If you, if you want to take a look, I'll come up here and take a look. You'll see how the building spans over uh, East Market. This is it's like something you would see. Uh, well, you see this in Ukraine and some of the countries in Eastern Europe. It's very common in that part of the world. Uh, and you see it coming and you see it going. And some of it is facing out towards Main Street and some of it is facing back in towards the courtyard. Any questions on, on, on these four buildings, which are, which kind of work together? The materials, the materials of the building will all relate to each other. The colors may differ a little bit. Um, the, the elevation of this building facing 
across to the higher building. You see how these, uh, we've, we've, we've combined floors for the windows from, from the lower floor aligned with the floor above, the same way that the old 19th or 20th century building across the street does. It has a tall vertical feeling to it, although the building itself is not as tall as across the street. But we are trying to give some cognizance to uh, some of the great buildings that are in the neighborhood. Okay, any questions on the architecture? Nice sure. architecture. Thank you very, very much. Very nice architecture. Where are they going to park for the shopping? Uh, a lot of it will be, it'll be on the street, frankly, a lot of it. Who's laughing? Hey, that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. So we do have some parking, as uh, uh, Scott mentioned, on uh, on uh, Murray Way. Yeah. Uh, again, here are the, the two storefronts on Main Street. So in addition to the chance of some parking on Main Street, there is parking, two parking lots right here, 100 feet down on Market Street. So there's two parking lots right there that are primarily for the uh, the occupants of the building, but obviously during the day when those shops are open, the hope would be that these folks are off at work, so the parking spaces there will be able to be used during the day by the shops on Main Street at night by the residents. So that's that's the plan for the for those commercial spaces. So Market Street does is utilized by the residents as well as the shoppers. Yes, sure, correct. I'm sure. not sure that the camera is picking up everybody's comments and questions. So perhaps you say them and then I'll repeat it into the microphone. And so you just said, what? I was asking about where the customers would be able to park. Okay. So the question is, where will customers for the, re the commercial space on the first floor of several of these buildings are going to be parking? And you mentioned on the street, and we had some giggles in the back because some of us do business in Campbell. And we know how hard it is to get parking, yeah. especially if you try to park in the spots that are sometimes known as dedicated to the fishery. The question is, uh, there is there is a, uh, a parking lot over here. It's a city lot. Yes. It's a city lot. Yes, that's Which right. has about how many spaces? About oh, 80? quite a few. I wouldn't say uh, that many, but quite a few. It's got, yes. Yeah, I, I park there on occasion. When I grab a bite at this little lunch room, right, right next to me. Yes. Okay, and that's 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 fairly new, well kept, well lighted. Yes. But it's only daytime parking. Does that help? So, how many total parking spaces are you talking for the entire complex? Okay. So the question is, how many spaces in the entire complex for parking? Eighty-eight. 88, 88 spaces. Seventy-nine residential units. 88 spaces. Okay, so I have a question on that because there are studies that I researched recently that say generally they look for 1.25 spaces per unit. So you're, you fall a little short of that. Well, I don't know who they is, but they, I would hope, take into consideration the environment that the development will occur in. So, down here, right above here, is a train station. And if I lived here and I were working in the city, I'd be, that sure as I'd be taking the train from over there. Okay. I, 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 I'm not from here. Is there a bus? This is a bus route here? Yes. There's Does buses. it go downtown? On both uh, Main Street yeah. and Montello Street, yes. And there are buses, so yes. we're not out in the boonies here. Right. Okay. But what if we have a young couple? that have two cars, and you're assigning one space per I think, unit. Yeah, again, I, just to jump in and answer that, again, it's a, it's a different kind of living. It, it wouldn't work for me. I've got two kids with cars, I've got four cars in my driveway, I'm not gonna rent one of these units, that's, that's the truth. So for me, it doesn't work, but all of these projects downtown, if you go by them right now at seven o'clock at night on a Friday, the parking lots aren't full, they're, they're only half used. The folks that are renting these just don't have the the need for vehicles. It, it isn't how I live, but the folks that are moving in here, it's what works. So the the little bit more than one space per unit is more than enough. You know, Planner Rob May could uh, 
I, I think we'll agree with that. The, the newer projects downtown just don't need the parking. The, in, in, in the city of Boston, they are, many developments are going without any parking. No parking. No, but the simple answer. But the, the simple answer is the Murrays are the ultimate owners of the property. If, again, they, they won't be able to rent the, uh, a unit there because there isn't enough parking. So the people who are going to rent it know that they're going to be allotted one space per unit. If that doesn't work, they're not going to move here. Mrs. Crooker. Your design for the apartments and parking is very similar to the other two huge apartment complexes that have been being commissioned to be built about a block down the street. You're betting on young urban professionals who don't have kids. That's not what's happening in this city. So how do you expect to build these places along the not 86 or 92 units that are going in in one place and 32 units in another? And how are we going to deal with the traffic situation? I don't know Plain Street. And between trains and school buses, I sometimes sit for 15 minutes trying to get out of my old Christmas driveway. I don't see a big daddy uh, a good idea. When was the last traffic flow study done? It's being done currently. It'll be ready for the when we submit to the board of appeals. The last one I heard from anyone was five years old. I, I, I think I, I had one done earlier than that, but we uh, need to look at that. Because I, I, I just do not see how we can possibly in this small area contain all this and have it work. Okay, Mrs. Crooker is con concerned about uh, traffic, you know, yes. volume. Right, and also concerned about the impacts of this project on top of two projects closer to Plain Street that were um, approved in the last two years. Okay. I think in one other answer, but I think politically statewide, these kind of developments are, are being encouraged everywhere, not just in Brockton, throughout the whole state that are abutting public transit. This is what people need, is a housing shortage, not only in Brockton, but in the entire state Developments around the train station are being encouraged by by the state government. That's what people want now is to live near transportation stations like you've got right here 200 feet down the road. That's what's being required, not being asked for. That's what's being required by state government now. And how is this going to end? Well, it's just... Exactly. It's, 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 it's within the last couple of years that it's been required by the state. To happen so these are some of the newest projects that are being developed under those guidelines what are the rents going to be no idea the rent the rents too early to tell mm -hmm. mr hersey thank you i like this i like 80 percent of it okay and i think it's going to be very nice because that part of the city is a dump you know. okay this is going to increase the value of a lot of things around there it's also going to increase business for the people who already have businesses there. He answered the question about parking space. If somebody knows they're not going to have a parking space in the second car, they're not going to rent the place. Sure. They're going to go. So that answer was answered by him. I will have some issues on safety, though, because some of those streets are going to have to be made one way. Or we're going to have major, major it's one this way is down. one way. It's one, one way down. What's that? It's Market it was, Street is one way down. Yes, yes. It's the, we all know that the corner of Maine and Perkins Ave, there's accidents there all the time because of that gas station. They go, it is a one way, Susan, you know that. Yes. And it, it, it's got to go one way, that gas station, in one way and out the other way, because that's where all the crashes are coming. There. That's a very big safety factor. The other factor is you talk about kids. I have so many little kids there during the construction of this project, and I hope it goes through. We're going to have to have police officers there in the morning for school and police officers there after school. The people who guide the kids across the street, they don't direct traffic. They just put a stop sign up there. That's not their responsibility. 
But that's going to be a safety factor for the kids while the construction is going on. There's a lot of kids that can walk past that. And that's something that's going to have to be discussed and talked about. Okay? Uh, but I think this is going to raise the value of a lot of things in that whole area. It's going to make more businesses prosper. Okay? The danger is the traffic here right now. The traffic there is bad on Main Street, not as bad on Montella Street. It's really bad there on Main Street. Something's going to have to be done there. That's a study that they'll have to do. Okay? I'm concerned about the kids being a high school teacher. Okay? It's going to be a very big safety factor there. I will do the construction of this. Thank you. Thank you. So let me just take a, a quick commercial break. On this frosty Friday night, I'm grateful to the city officials who managed to get here um, for this meeting. And that includes Ward 4 School Committee, Tony Rodriguez, Ward 3 City Councilor, um, Mark D'Agostino, and our Director of Planning and Economic Development, Rob May. Thank you very much for being here. So who's next? Who's got the next? I'm curious about the rent. I mean, what are the rents for ones that are going up? What right. is the median you, income that they're expecting? Right. And you must have estimated rents, rental right. rates. The typical, yeah, they're right around 1,800, 2,000 is right. the. Yeah. For two beds. I think for two bedrooms, <clears throat> right. For one how bedroom, many, sure. How many two bedroom units are there? What's the breakdown? I don't know. Yeah, well, those front, let me just say, those front, front, yeah. front houses are going to be in Is it condos? Condos. Home ownership. The, the ones on Main Street. Yeah. yeah. The two buildings on Main Street are, are anticipated to be condominiums, so they will be owned. And do you know, have an approximate value? What would they sell for? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody? No. What was the question? How much would they sell for? The condominiums. Is there a prize? I'm interested in an approximate sale price for those condominiums. I would look up what the average sale price would be in the market, and I would get that too. Yeah. Yeah, I think it depends on where they are. I, I think, I, I would think that Madrid Square would be, the values there would be a little different than here. But yes, I would like, I would like to know that, yes, and I'll post it. Thank you. Someone else? Come on, we all came out on this frosty night. Give, come on, give me more questions. Well, I want to know what, what size units are going to be now for retail. Okay. So, oh, the retail. Yes. Well, that can be broken up anyway. That's a variable. That could be tiny. It can be large. You don't have any perspective? That depends upon, not at this point in time. You know, but what, 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 what's working in retail today is smaller units, not the big ones. Although I was in a CVS the other day, it had to be, be 10,000 square feet. It was enormous. These, these drawings here, uh, we're showing you one up here, but we have plans of each building, how it's broken down, if you'd like to see it. I will. I'm not, like, I guess it's like perplexed. My, I'm perplexed because there doesn't seem to be a lot of what you're, what you're putting in it. If you're planning to spend this kind of money to build it, you have to have some idea of what you're going to get out of it. For the, for the commercial properties? Yeah. All of these projects, this, this isn't going to be built for two years, three years. So we can say, I'm going to open up a coffee shop. In two years, I can be out of business. There's, in, until the projects get built and the people start moving in, nobody's going to want to rent these spaces. It's the, the same project that you have all of these mixed-use projects. The, the one that's going on on Lynch's property, there's a, a big chunk of commercial space. The ones downtown on, uh, on Center Street did the same thing. And, and until all of the people get in there, nobody's going to want to rent them. Nobody wants to jump before there's the custom is already built in. So for us to say it, I mean, I, I'll take a stab and say, we're gonna have a coffee shop and a, a phone store, but who knows, it's three years from now. The mayor suggested if the, if the space stayed vacant, perhaps we could, uh, you know, could uh, cut a deal with the, the public library, maybe a police substation, things like that, to use up the space. More if it wasn't, something to that effect. But 
when we, when uh, Councilor Ray Castro and I were the mayor, he had talked about wanting to open up the branch of uh, the library. The library. Yes. This, might, this would be a great location. Yes. Jake used to go to the library that used to be there. Yeah. He also Six mentioned years. a police substation right. in our meeting a week ago. So, <laughs> so for, for now, it's just way too early to say what would go there for a retail space. For the retail. It's, it's, it's one-fifth. It's 20% of the whole thing. It's, it, it's the frosting on the cake. The cake is all about second floor up. The first floor is the frosting. It's reversed. But it's a, a couple thousand square feet, correct? A couple of thousand, it's more than a couple of thousand. Right. Yeah. Give me one more. Uh, uh, oh God. Uh, how about uh, how about uh, eight thousand square feet? Hold the library. Yes. <clears throat> Lots of it will be subsidized. Yes, the pro the the uh, the units that are back from Main Street, are along Main Street, those are condos, market rate. Behind that, that is to say, the building right here and the building right here, these two buildings will have some units that will be subsidized. I, I think what you mean by subsidized is workforce housing. Workforce. Workforce Pardon housing. me. Yeah. You're right, Susan. Uh, you've right. got a lot of confusing terms. Oh, oh my God, God. I can't keep up with it. Workforce housing. Workforce housing. What is that? It, it, it's housing that um, the amount that you pay in rent is dependent on, on your income. Oh, yeah. Sliding scale to a point. Do I gather your interest is a library? I'd like to see more community, more access to these kids down here. I'd like to see more retail, but that this location doesn't make people feel comfortable with all the traffic. So if we had something to just entertain, giving the kids the library would be fantastic. Yeah, I said, Councilor Castro has mentioned that, Mayor yeah. Sullivan has mentioned that as we get along, but we're, it's, it's down the road, but it's, it's being thought. To reinforce the community and the business. Uh, we got kids that are roaming the streets or they're on their machines. We need to get them involved in more activities. <laughs> I've been involved in the last 10 years in a lot of the large housing situations that go on in this area, the towns, even in Boston. And one of the more creative um, offerings to people that are potential renters or buyers is now coming forward. And that is, as Scott said, a lot of people don't want to jump into whatever the rain is and all the other stuff and be stuck with it. So now, some of the developers that I've represented in this area and in Boston are now offering a situation like this. You may rent for three years with an option to purchase. So if you really like what you got, and you like the rent, and you now want to get some equity, you buy it. It's just another new creative thing that developers are doing. Now, rent to own isn't specifically on the table, but it's something, it's an idea I would be willing to chase. And the other idea that I would be willing to chase, it's on my little wish list, is housing for people over 55. Because we have so, if we're four, we have so many neighborhoods off Plain Street, off Oakland Street, with terrific people who raise their children in the houses they live in, they've just about paid off their mortgages or they've just paid it off, and their houses are too big for them, but they live comfortably and they like Brockton and they want to stay. If only they could downsize into a nice place. That's what I'm looking for and I'm hopeful for out of a project like this. It's big enough to have some of that. I believe it's Yes, don't you think? Yes. I'm over 55. <laughs> 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 Uh, Speak for yourself. Uh, Somebody else with a question. What is your target demographic for the type of renters? 
Okay, the question is the current demographic for the potential renters. Excuse me, but that's um, the one that, call, that calls you up, the one that calls the number that's posted on the window. You know what I mean? There's no target demographic here. It's so how, I, I'm totally confused. How can you tell me which kind of tenants you're expecting and tell me you don't have the target demographic? Because the, the issue of expectancy focused on the number of people in the unit and how many vehicles they might have. That's a, that can be articulated pretty fast on the telephone. In terms of beyond that, it's wide open. Uh, because, I mean, I can associate that to income ratio off the top of my head. I don't understand why it's so far fetched. Well, I think that's a mistake. Well, I can tell you that right now, the target demographics that I'm worried about are the generational people that can no longer afford to live in the city, and you are definitely not targeting any of them. I don't think we've talked long enough. Well, I, mean, I got all the time in the world, you want. <laughs> well, I don't, but uh, we'll have a conversation. I'll give you my card, and I'll, right. I'd like to hear what you have to say further. Someone else? More questions? Well, if there aren't more questions, I understand the, this application will be filed uh, with the planning board, or with tech review. Okay, and uh, to be heard in? Well, we're going to zoning first. Zoning okay, first. zoning first. We'll be in zoning in March, March, April? I would think April. April. Okay, um, if people call me, we'll ask Thomas to put up on the screen at this point in the video, my email address and my, and my office number. If, if you're interested to know, yes, right across. Um, if you're interested to know when these meetings are happening, drop me a line and I'll put you on my email list. That's why I'm asking everyone to sign up tonight. We have snacks here and water and candy. Please take it home so that I don't and, and eat it. Please take it home. I, I want to thank everyone here and our presenters for coming. The last call, any other questions or concerns? The traffic is a big one, right? Um, you know, it sounds like the, the profile of the renters and the, the potential rental amounts are big ones, as, as well as values of the condominiums. We've got a lot more information to obtain as this goes through the approval process. Thank you to everyone for being here tonight. Call me if you have questions or comments. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.